we can hold whatever it is that we are being asked to hold. And there's been so much grief. What I want to offer here today is a space of remembrance that no matter what it is that you're going through, that you are not alone and that you have the inner resources, that there is support available to you. Welcome here, dear ones. We have had a death in the family for one of our wonderful team members. And so in honoring of this sacred passage, we'll be taking a week off next week. It's so important to take time for rest and to slow down on responsibilities during these times. Isn't it amazing how all of the things that make up our very full daily lives fade into the background when something like this comes up? and we're able to regain perspective on what truly matters. In this week's episode, entitled Pulse of Life, Navigating the Challenges of This Time, I share with you some of what I see in the now as important, and how we can show up with more truth, generosity, and strength, and how we can expand into life's invitations. I hope that this inspires you and I invite you to get in touch in some way, whether it be through membership, writing us a review, or coming to work with me directly. Thank you for being part of this community and making space to listen here. You are deeply appreciated. Welcome to All That We Are with me, your host, Amisha Gadiali. On this show, we explore the weave between activism, the sacred, creativity, and regeneration. The spaces where our inner and outer worlds dance. From healing trauma to nature connection, to new technologies, to ancient wisdom, it's time for us to move beyond silos and into an integrated way of being. Every one of us has ideas and personal experiences to share that can lead us to a more beautiful future. Despite the challenges we face as a global community or the pressures we meet in our daily lives, when we stop and dare to listen, to ask ourselves the big questions and to share what we are already doing and envisioning, we create the futures of our wildest dreams and we begin to embody all that we are, all that we are becoming and all that is possible. We are here in this really quite extraordinary time. If you are feeling the upswell of challenges and pressures, just know that you're not alone at this time. We have this really individualized way of being that's come to us through the systems of oppression in which we live in. Often we just really feel that whatever we're experiencing is is only happening to us and that it is our fault somehow. It's something that we need to fix or change. I want to remind you that this particular time is challenging in really new ways. And of course, we've all experienced a big shift from the pandemic and then landing into a kind of cost of living crisis where everything just feels tighter and more squeezed and less certain, more pressured. And that the understanding of climate change, the perhaps feeling war being closer to home, that all of these kind of different factors play into our experience. And of course we live in a way where we are really bombarded with information. It's it's quite fascinating how much information we are all exposed to and the speed at which we are having to process it and mix this with our sacred lives and our responsibilities of our work and our families and our joy, our friendships, and kind of navigate all of this together. I remember when I was 
perhaps starting Kundalini yoga. So I've studied yoga for many, many years. Two really deep immersions. Uh, the first was around 2008, and it was not long after the death of my dear friend, Jules, where um, we had been together the night that she died, we were together. It was a really deep, profound experience for me at the age of 24. It came as, a, as, a, as the third in a trilogy of accidents that involved buses, four-wheel drive pickup trucks, and um, kids joyriding. Um, and Jules was in the first accident with me, and then, and then the third. After that, one of the things that happened was, as I turned 25, I went through this process of asking myself, okay, what in my life is in my life because it really resonates with who I am now. And what in my life is, is just here because maybe I, I brought it in through a different aspect of myself. For example, I was raised a vegetarian and I started to eat meat at 11. It was a triple dare with a cherry on top uh, at McDonald's at my dear friend Alexa's birthday party. We had just been to Toys R Us and then we were at McDonald's and you know, I had a bite of the burger and then I became you know, a vegetarian that ate burgers and by, it was steaks by the time I was 16. And then I carried on eating meat until 25. And at 25, I was just reassessing my life and realized that I was raised a vegetarian and it, it wasn't just a cultural thing. It was a, a spiritual aspect of our lives. And coming from a Jain and a Hindu family, but also from Gujarat, where the majority of people are vegetarian in Gujarat. It was a really interesting moment of just going, okay, what have I picked up from rebellion or, or other kind of teenage immature notions that are now in my life as an adult? During this time, I, I started to practice a lot of Kundalini yoga. Kundalini yoga is a practice that some of you may have come across. It has a lot of like very intense breath work and, and a lot of it is about like moving the energy really up. Um, I personally find that when I do those practices, I find myself like very, very focused and disciplined. Um, but it's also for some people it can kind of really like kind of whip you up into sort of a flow of ungroundedness. As with all of these practices, it's it's about the right, the right time, the right guides, the right amount and dependent on what else is important to you in your life. And I really loved these practices. It was connected more to the Sikh tradition and a lot of the prayers, the, the mantras that are sung in Kundalini Yoga are, are Sikh prayers. It had a very dogmatic nature to it. And I've never been one that's been very good within these kind of very patriarchal dogmatic systems. They always feel very oppressive to my soul. And I really believe that our spirituality does not have to be owned by anyone else, that it is something that we, that we have naturally as, as human beings, um, beings in a symbiosis with this whole reality that we're in. And then of course, however open beyond that, you want to take it. And so knowing that we have this enormous opportunity to really be connected to the truth of who we are. And of course, the right practices, the right guides, the right support at the right time can do so much to shepherd us through, especially as many of us don't have this in our communities. We don't have a kind of community focus with a, a pastor and a weekly gathering and a space for our prayers and people really looking out for us and helping us to grow in, in the right way, in the way that really connects us most deeply to the truth of who we are and what it is that we have to offer. In Kundalini Yoga, there was a, a guru called Yogi Bhajan, and I haven't really read all the details, but unsurprisingly, it came out more recently that, you know, the, the usual stuff that comes out with 
with these male yoga gurus. And so one of the things I used to find, you know, a little bit challenging when I was practicing a lot of Kundalini was that often the teachers would very much work to a script and they would say, you know, Yogi Bhajan says, and there would be a lot of that kind of really like centering him. One of the things that I heard, and this must have been sometime in maybe 2008, was that Yogi Bhajan says at the age of Aquarius, a third will die, a third will go mad, and a third will be will be able to survive, you know, will be able to kind of hold the space and navigate the changes that this time will bring. That seemed really alien at that moment that that could be happening. As I just scan people in my life and people that I know, there's been so much death in recent years. Uh, I have I have Trello boards upon Trello boards for the podcast of people that would be interesting to have on the show. And it's been really interesting, like seeing a number of those people die and of different ages as well, see friends die. And also this difficulty that we're having with mental health and how much stress and anxiety there is and how difficult it can be to to navigate everything that we're holding and do this in a way that's healthy. And with so many things that can lead to us feeling more isolated, more depressed, more anxious. I have a friend right now that that really is on a bit of a knife's edge around, around her mental state and life itself. And I was just really deep in prayer for her yesterday, really deep in prayer for, for all of those that are really struggling at this time. Jyoti Ma, who has been on this podcast a couple of times, she's always talked about 2026 and how the ending is falling into the beginning. And, and I guess what that means is that many of the prophecies tell us that things are going to be challenging for another, you know, at least four years, if not, if not longer. With that, we we need like different skills. We need a different way of relating to ourselves and each other, the earth and all of life. One thing that's really struck out for me, if you don't believe or listen to spiritual teachers or prophecies from other more ancient cultures, is that you can just look at what's happening in our politics and you can see how far away certain things are going from the kind of world that we might want to live in. You can see how climate is not being treated as an emergency, despite it being so clear that it is. It is the emergency of this time. And yet corporate profit always seems to be more important. And we have yet to have the the regulatory processes in order to to stop that. You know, I live here in England. Our rivers are all polluted. And this is supposedly one of the richest countries in the world. This is supposedly a place that is desirable to live. Yet you can't even swim in the rivers. I mean, what would that be if we measured our countries by these kinds of factors? You know, if those were targets for all countries to to make our rivers drinkable in, swimmable in. Many friends that swim in the rivers like every day throughout the whole year. I'm more of a, a, just a summer, a summer river dipper. But, you know, you can't put your head under because then you tend to get sick. And of course, that's nothing compared to the rivers that you see in India and China where toxic chemicals are just dumped and, you know, often the river is the same colour as whatever the trend colour is that the factories are producing clothing at that time. And so we just see this really painful distortion happening everywhere. And so it doesn't take much to see that we are on this path where we, the priorities are wrong. Everything is being squeezed. And, you know, if you're in the UK, 
you might be really feeling the pinch of the the rise in energy prices, which also is a rise in council tax, and then there's another rise in energy coming in in the autumn. And of course, we've had technologies for a long time, like solar, like wind, where we wouldn't be reliant on oil in the same way. And then we would be in a different situation around cost of living. And so it is a time that we're all kind of being squeezed and put in a pressure cooker. And and what does that mean for us? It means that we need to be more resilient in ourselves. There's a way in which resilience can feel like this kind of toughening up. And what I'm feeling today is what would that resilience be if it's just more of an invitation into joy and into sacred experience, a belief that we can hold whatever it is that we are being asked to hold. For me, the last couple of years have been really intense. I would say actually three years maybe four, I feel like life has just been throwing all kinds of really difficult challenges at me. And there's been so much grief, so much grief, grief of loss of a community, grief of loss of a life partner, of loss of a, of a baby, loss of parent. And many of you know that my mother has Parkinson's and um, yeah, we've been spending a lot of time together since my dad died, which is coming up to two years next week. And we've been spending a lot of time together. Um, we lived together for a year and a half of that time and you know, being up close and witnessing this illness. Um, and again, it's, it's another illness of our time I read somewhere that 65% of us, I don't know if that was a UK or a UK statistic, but have chronic illnesses. It's really interesting. You know, we know that so many of the things that we are doing, the food that we're eating, the lifestyles that we're living, the never allowing our nervous systems to really rest, the moving from thing to thing, the, the focus always on growth more, 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 the TV, the junk food, all of it, we know what it's doing to us and we're seeing it show up in illnesses as people enter that time of their lives, you know, where just being allowed to step into their wisdom and rest, maybe place their hands into the ground, the garden, tend to the garden and be nurtured by us younger generations and instead many having to endure these horrendous illnesses, Parkinson's, it is ravenous and it operates on so many different levels that it's an incredibly torturous process. And yet, you know, within it, all you can do is remain as centered, as connected to your soul and your joy as you can, as you navigate the challenges of both having the disease and also of being a carer, being within within a family structure or a love structure around somebody that is going through that. And one thing that I've also really noticed in the community around this podcast is that there's a lot of a lot of chronic illnesses, a lot of long COVID, um, glandular fever, ME, inexplicable tiredness, a lot of these kinds of things, which I feel is connected to working in in a way that often leads to burnout. And this is something that I have been dancing with again and again, wanting to give a lot, giving too much. For me, at least, there's not like a clear warning. It's not like I feel it coming and then it comes. Often I'm like, oh no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And then like, it's not. And I know that for others, it's a little bit different, but. But that activist mindset and really like caring and taking on a lot of what's happening in the collective, as well as also making choices that mean that one might not have as much financial security, might not have as much support, you know, HR department and people to go to and to ask for support with different things. And all of that can lead to having um, weaker systems, as can sensitivity in general. And I know many of you listening 
are very sensitive and that that's a beautiful, beautiful quality as it, it attunes to being able to listen deeper and having a deeper connection with your intuition and being able to listen to the whispers of the land and spot where there are issues. But it also can mean being a lot more sensitive to energy, to mold, to EMFs, all of this kind of thing as well, which can make living in the world um, a little bit harder. It can ask a lot more of you. What I want to offer here today is a space of remembrance that no matter what it is that you're going through, that you are not alone and that you have the inner resources, that there is support available to you. I've just been through quite a process of death and rebirth, you know, these cycles that we go in and in the death phase, it's like everything just gets harder and heavier and like more frenetic and it feels like it piles up and it feels like, whoa, how am I going to, how, how am I going to be? You get this very clear knowing that you can't go forward like this. And then something happens in my case in in recent weeks i really hit this point where it was just building and building and building and then i had a very scary and very lucky moment on the road just clearing out my parents house and driving back and yeah anyway a near miss shall we say and then that sort of signaled a kind of a shift in energy and i had already reached out for various bits of support in order to move through some of the energy that I could feel building up and then to land this week with the solstice, having just spent two days in prayer and two days walking, I joined uh, my dear friend, Charlotte Pulver, who's been on this podcast. That woman is a, a wisdom keeper of this land. She knows so much and she has studied so much and she's been an incredible support to me over the past year or so um, as I've been navigating life and, and kind of directing me to different plants that might be able to support me. I went on her pilgrimage to Stonehenge and we walked the land in the beautiful sunshine. We were blessed with some actual days of really beautiful British summer and we walked to Stonehenge going to Blickmead, a most beautiful spring, into a little woodland, and then onwards into the stones. And this is all an area that will be really affected in, in ways that are irreparable if the whole superhighway underground tunnel thing happens. And so I do ask all of you to pay attention to that campaign and to help in, in the process of making sure that that doesn't happen so that these sites are preserved. And we were in Stonehenge. We were some of the first in there to conclude the pilgrimage and the ceremony and uh, stayed there for the sunset and later into the night. And then, um, yeah, journey through the stars and then went to, to Glastonbury to the sacred sites of the Chalice Well and the White Spring, which are very dear sights to me. Charlotte and I just went there together the day after the pilgrimage and made some prayers and, and did some rituals of real reconnection. And in this space of ritual, I always find so much clarity and power and remembering, receive the wisdom and the guidance for what's next and where I'm being directed to serve and to share these areas of Stonehenge and the White Spring, the Red Spring, the Chalice Gardens have been so dear to me, especially since I did a priestess initiation back in 2015 and got to experience these sacred sites in a new way, learn and understand the, the stories there and, and the power and, and how to come to these spaces in, in, in way of ritual and live in a reciprocal relationship with them 
So it's not like you go to these places and you kind of consume and you take and you have an experience, but actually you go with offerings, with prayers, with honoring, uh, as well as what you might receive there. In order to do that, you have to really understand yourself as a sacred being and understand the, the gift that is you. And that's there for all of us. It really is there for all of us. M much of the time over the last couple of years, I have been focused a lot on all that we are and style and presence and hosting these kind of more collaborative moments of bringing lots of us together. Likewise, when we did the retreat, the weave, it was very focused on everyone sharing their gifts and shining. And often I end up talking more about that side of my work and mostly because yeah, because it involves so many people and I always want to share and honor them. And there's a part of my my work that I don't share so much about on my social media and things. And, and that's the one-to-one -one work that I'm doing. And I've been really grateful through the whole of the last couple of years to work with some incredible, incredible people through my leadership program, Beautiful Leadership Mentoring and also in general through offering one-to-one -one sessions. And I really feel to make myself available to all of you to support in holding all of the energies of these times and to support you in being able to anchor in deeper into who you are and that connection with earth and with the great cosmos and your soul and what it is that you're here to offer. There are different ways in which we can engage together in this way. The first, which is, it's a really low cost option, and that is to join our membership for all that we are. So this was called Presence Collective. Some of you might know it as that. Some of you have been patrons of the podcast and it's all coming together in this thing called All That We Are Membership. And within that, there are a whole library of workshops and each of these workshops have different practices. And it's all kinds of things from learning to navigate the moon and understand how the moon affects our lives. And so how to work with the moon in learning how to connect deeper to intuition in processing grief and eco grief in particular, in expanding into our creativity and learning practices such as, as breath work, as pranayama, some of these practices that can really help to ground you and activate the, the prana, the life force in your body. As well as that, it's a really beautiful community offering. You can access our social network, which is just for members. And, and the idea behind that, and it was something that was really asked for by various people that listen, is that so many people that listen to these episodes from all over the world perhaps feel that they don't have people around that they are able to talk to about the kinds of things that we're talking to about and that are interested in the same things. And so part of my, the work that I've been doing is just bringing people together it's been incredible. It's led to so many really nice connections and friendships and living situations and just work collaborations, lots of gorgeous stuff. And so the membership also accesses you that as well so that you can share things that inspire you with other people and be inspired by what they share, events, articles, all kinds of things. And it connects to our app as well, which allows you to access it you know, from your phone and to actually have a sacred space on your phone. So you press all that we are and there's no advertising, there's no algorithms. It's just very simple, straightforward space to connect to others. Also means that for any of the courses or gatherings that we're doing, there are groups on there and it, it takes you off WhatsApp and it's just, yeah, a really, a really beautiful offering. But I, I want to really draw your attention to all of the resources that are there. There are the tree whispers and 
these are a space for you to just, you know, listen and connect into some wisdom. And they're like a little prayer, a little poem, a contemplation. Yeah, just to the point workshops, short workshops that really help you to anchor and navigate, as well as meditations and activations, learning to work with energy, all kinds of things. And we had the picnic actually last weekend for the All That We Are community. And and a beautiful young woman said, you know, there are certain things that you talk about on the podcast a lot. And I don't, I want to know how do you find out more about that? Like, what does that mean? And so what I've tried to do within the membership is offer these little workshops that allow you to connect to the practices that allow you to live the values more deeply of the podcast. And the wonderful thing about the membership is it's not just a what can I get space, but it's really about the reciprocity of this whole this whole community. And the more members that we have, the easier it is for us to make podcast episodes and to keep them free and to not do any annoying things where we cut out halfway through and say, if you want to listen to the rest of the podcast, you must subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Like we just want to make this podcast free. So there's really good information, really good conversations, really good inspiration out there that anyone can access. Um, and so our members really help with making that possible with funding the the podcast team. And it's it's kind of one of those power of numbers things. And so if we have 10 members, it costs more to run than it than it brings in. But if we have 200 members, then it really means that that it changes what's possible for us. And so every single person that chooses to join really does make a difference. And there's so much like value within that as well. In that there's a live monthly circle. These will be a little bit different than they've been before during the pandemic, especially in very kind of intimate and everyone has had a space to just sort of share how they are. And then we've sometimes danced afterwards and sometimes meditated a little bit, but going forward, I really want to focus on using them as a space to practice together, to strengthen, to deepen in ourselves. And so each one will start with a, with a really decent 20 minutes, including breath work and meditation and some energetic activations and then it will be more of a a Q&A type sharing and so you'll be able to ask questions about the podcast uh, maybe there's something that you've heard on the podcast and you're like but what is that or how do I do that you know you talked about this like what does that mean or maybe you might be facing a particular challenge in your life and you'll be able to like, bring that and um, I can support you with that in this space and be there for you and listen and share what might be useful. Alongside that, I, I'm opening up more of my one-to-one sessions. And so I, re- I had w- raised the prices, but I'm actually going to bring them back down because I know that sometimes this well-being work and this deep healing work this just like having space held for you can be really expensive so I want to bring it down and perhaps also offer a lower rate um, for those that need it generally these sessions are online which is so beautiful because when it's online I work with people generally online like as in when I go to see people that support me I think we always need to have like these kind of chains if you like of support where Uh, everyone who supports people is also supported by other people and so um, that holding if you like it just gets bigger and stronger and is able to yeah to show up in a much clearer way and what I like about working remotely is it happens in your own space so it happens in the space that you are comfortable and it happens in the space that you don't have to do anything or be anything in and so it also means that whatever energy comes through enters into your space that the integration happens in and around your life rather than being this kind of thing that's outside of it Um, you don't have to rush onto the tube or anything afterwards and all of that makes it just much more convenient and much more powerful 
And it also helps with that understanding that, you know, so much happens through the unseen. And that means that you can feel things, you know, even though you're not there in person. And so then it makes you realize how powerful energy is and how unlimited it is as well, that it's not limited through space and time. And so in these sessions that I offer, there is an opportunity to to come with something that is challenging for you. And what we do is we clear trauma patterns around it. These trauma patterns are things that you may have been born with or that have happened throughout your life. And I can't really explain how it works, but it's almost like things that you deeply feel, think, think about yourself and feel about life. And they just get brought to the surface and then they get released. Then we plant seeds in that space and the seeds are qualities that are dormant within you. So they're yours, they're your seeds, but you might not have an experience with them. You might not embody them. You might not know them. So you might kind of like know them with your mind or know that they're um, a difficult area for you. And what we do is we plant the seed into your body, into your energetic body as well. Then it blooms. You water it every day in the coming days. I I tell you how long for, and and then it really blooms. And I hadn't updated uh, my website about this work for a really long time. And a lot of the testimonials that were there were there from many years ago, maybe when I started offering this work, which was around 2015, I think. I did my Reiki master back in 2004, I want to say, maybe a bit before then, through various other deep work that I had done, especially a period of a number of years working with plant medicine and um, a very incredible mystic, I kind of opened and expanded this work deeper. One of my clients, Haley, who is an incredible artist based in the States, she wrote me a very recent testimonial and I'm going to share it with you because it maybe speaks, I find it easier to kind of explain what this is maybe through how it's experienced rather than the process because the process doesn't really speak to the experience. She says, Amisha works from an open and emanating heart as well as from a most grounded place. Her brilliance is her intuitive ability to tap the nail on the head of core limiting beliefs that are hidden yet known to me. I know my truth by the way it feels. Amisha brings my attention to it with the brightest of compassionate arrows. After 28 years of deep healing and inquiry, opening many heavy doors to hard truths that needed to be pulled into the light, I knew I was ready for expansiveness of a different kind. Amisha's approach is exactly right for me. The doors are lighter now. What's behind them are gems I put away for safekeeping. It's a rare experience to be seen through the eyes of another with such nuance and care and to experience this kind of healing work as a collaboration of the best kind. I hope that that gives you an insight of what these sessions might feel like and what might be possible through them. It's open for anyone, even if it's the first time you've ever done anything like this or, or if you're a healer, a medicine woman, a person that's so deep on your own path, it's always helpful to, to sometimes collaborate with another and see what comes through. Then, of course, there is the beautiful leadership mentoring. I call it leadership mentoring because I feel like we are entrained as followers in the current world. Um, it's so there in our social media. You know, who do you follow? That shift to really follow your own truth, to listen to your soul, and to understand your path as it is right for you. We live in such a deep comparison society and there's so much looking over what someone else is doing and 
course, the way that social media has unfolded, where you see these little glimpses into people's lives. And of course, it, it could never be the whole story. You know, who wants to see lots of pictures of beans on toast or whatever your daily life might be made up of? People going to the toilet, like, of course, we don't need to see that. You know, we see people's expressions of their joy or their inspiration or their celebration. Um, but of course, it can be really distracting. I feel like leadership is really anchoring in to, to what it is that you're here for. There's this part in the Bhagavad Gita, um, if you know that, it's like one of the, the kind of seminal texts that is, is given in all yoga teacher trainings. In the story, Arjun realizes that it is better to fail in your own path than it is to succeed in the path of another. What that means is if we aspire to, to live someone else's life, that we miss so much of what's there for us. You know, life isn't meant to be this very easy thing. Like we, we come here, there's karmic lessons to be learned. There's growth, there's understanding our own story, understanding our ancestry, healing our ancestral stories, healing our ancestral lines, understanding, you know, why we might have been born where we are and what we have to offer with our unique stories and skills and, and ways of looking at the world and creativity. And that's challenging. It's not easy to venture into those levels of truth and to really understand what it is that that we are here to do and to clear through what may be challenging for us to understand what's been challenging to to those in our family break patterns before they get passed on to future generations and this deep work requires a really supportive space. And what I offer in this leadership mentoring is a space of reconnection to the sacred, a space to shift many patterns and to open to many gifts, as well as a really practical understanding of who we are and what it is that we might have to offer. And there are so many elements of learning and wisdom that come in through the mentoring dynamic. They come through as support and inspiration and deeper connection with intuition and clearer seeing into your path forward. There is so much that gets opened up in the space. I've had several inquiries recently, and so I've decided to open up a three month round of mentoring this summer, which actually will be July, August, September. I know it's a time when a lot of people are traveling and there's a lot of fun, there's a lot of disruption, but it's also this time in the wheel of the year that's about expression and you know shining shining like the sun so it's a really good time to also be able to to tune in to move and shift things and so yeah this round will be starting first week of july and we'll we'll go up to the end of september there are just a couple of places available and of course because it happens on zoom it doesn't matter if you're away or anything. Can I always offer this very flexible, no guilt, no shame, and really invite in this beautiful flow as well. So if you're going to be away or if you're feeling really tired or up against it, there's always a possibility of moving sessions with no idea of like, oh, that's really disrespectful, but actually trusting that if it's better for you to move it, it's better for me to move it. And it always is. Yeah, so it's it's there and it doesn't have to be something that's really hard to do. I mean, often people say things like, when I've got more time or when I'm back, I want to do that. And it's like, well, back from where? Because like we're just living wherever we are. 
And what's really beautiful about working through through video calls and things is that it doesn't matter. So even if you are on holiday or somewhere else, you can still tune in to this work. And it's just an hour and a bit, you know, and it it can have a really deep impact. Um, and that maybe also there's a spaciousness of holidays of getting a little bit more time for reflection and for creativity. And one of the things that I often work with people on is power to share like more of your gifts to work through the worth and the confidence the real connection to creativity and also to letting go of shame uh, shame around your desires avoid what it is that you might want to do uh, feelings of yeah just not being good enough or maybe just feeling like a bit beaten down by life and that that's disconnect created a disconnect and of course, all of this work is set in a, in a collective understanding. And so we work very much with you and with what's going on for you, but also with an understanding of what's, what's happening in the collective. Uh, and that just really helps to ground it and also to make the shifts deeper and to start to learn more, to discern more like what's yours and what's cultural. And then how do you navigate creating your own path against perhaps certain cultural movements? We are taking just a short pause here. If you are enjoying this episode, please consider joining our community. For a small contribution, you can be part of our beautiful online world where we deepen the conversation and offer spaces of learning and practice. As a member, you are a patron supporting the making of this show and you receive a number of benefits such as special member-only events and discounts on all our courses, retreats and in-person experiences. You will have membership to our app, and connect with inspiring humans around the world through a social network to discuss the themes of the show away from the eyes of advertisers and the manipulation of big tech. Our membership is what makes us able to stay advertising free in a world that is always trying to sell us stuff we don't need. And it is the very heart of all that we are. Head to www.allthatweare.org forward slash support to find out more. I feel to end our time together here with a bit of a pause. If you are driving as you're listening to this, then definitely keep your eyes open. I know some of you drive and some of you run whilst you're listening to these episodes. And so, yeah, keep your eyes open and take it as an invitation not to become less present, but to become more present. For those of you that are somewhere still where you can maybe rest upon the land or a tree or your sofa, you can choose if you'd like to sit up nice and tall or if you'd like to lay down. In solidarity, we're all going to keep our eyes open deepen our breathing a little bit. Breathe into your belly and your heart. And exhale. Slow and deep. And become really aware of where you are, of where you find yourself on this planet Earth right now. Look deeper into the landscape, into what you can see, the colors. And the intention here is not to, to whispery, like a whispery kind of 
dream away, especially if you're driving, but to really sharpen actually your attention, sharpen your senses to the colors, the feeling in the air. How does the air feel against your skin? What can you smell? What do you notice? And you can let your breathing return to normal. And notice if you feel any different than you did before. This exercise of just connecting to your senses. It can really land you more in your body. If you're feeling anxiety, a bit of overwhelm, deep grief, confusion. A lack of clarity, not knowing, you know, which way to go next. And I want to offer these invitations really with this nuance, which is that you are great as you are and that there is no need to thrive and thrive to be better, that it's not like a kind of chase for this place where like life is perfect. So I feel that so much of self-development work is like that and And when I received the kind of title Dismantling New Age Spirituality, which evolved into our From Me to We course, a lot of it was actually a desire to kind of break down some of these ideas, one of which is that that there's this place that you get to where everything just is amazing and everything fits into place. And it's like, well, how can that be in the time that we're living in? unless you just shroud yourself in so much privilege that you don't notice what's going on, how it's affecting others, the plants, the animals, more than human world. The nuance is that we can edge closer to our truth every day, that we can occupy more of our bodies, that we can live in greater connection harmony with life, harmony with ourself, that we cannot be distracted by certain patterns that may have kept us somewhere, but that we move towards this with a real love, with just a real desire to show up, to evolve. And so I really always really try to never put any kind of desperation around any of the work that I offer, you know, that that energy, that sales energy that we're just so bombarded with. I find it so challenging to be in. And, you know, I remember once working with someone on like a marketing funnel and her just being like, well, can we say that people that work with you will make more money? And I was just like, no, (laughs) we really can't. It always makes me really sad when people that are just, you know, really good at like holding space for people that are really good 
guides, healers, have been on deep journeys themselves kind of then just start saying, let me show you how I developed a six-figure business, a seven-figure business or whatever. Um, I don't feel like that's what it's about when we're tuned into the collective. Of course, that may happen. I'm not saying that that can't happen or that won't happen, if, especially if that's something that you need to happen in a time of a cost of living crisis. But my invitation's a bit deeper. It's more grounded in, in just wanting to, to be more present what I've learned is that we can always expand into whatever life is throwing at us. And it often, you know, feels like we can't. And if you were to say, oh, like in your life or this year, you're going to experience this, this and this, you'd just be like, well, that's impossible. Like, how would I be able to manage that? Of course we can, but there is some skill involved in that. Yoga is skill in action. A lot of my own kind of trainings and practices have been in yoga and it's it's known as the space of skill in action where we learn how to navigate life better how to be stronger and more flexible and more ourselves when we come into these moments of rebirth it's always like wow you know it's like a homecoming and it's always so welcome after the the, the journey that comes before it I really feel like this work is available to anyone, you know, and when I wrote my book, Intuition, I really wanted to make this not feel like this, it's just like a thing for magic people, whatever, whoever magic people are, but actually that, you know, we have so much intelligence and, and what is it to, to use more of it, to live a a bigger ex existence inside of ourselves, you know, and that's not in a narcissistic way. And it's not like, you know, everyone doesn't need to be famous and be this, be that, but allowing our souls to take more space, the bigness in that way and reconnecting to sacred rituals. Some of you might know that I recently moved to Somerset and there is an option to do some in-person sessions in my garden, I have a little beautiful space in the garden for that. Another thing that's been coming through to offer are one-to-one -one retreats. These aren't, you know, like the big group retreats where you come and there's loads of people and there's loads of things happening. And, um, but actually for anyone that might want to come to Somerset and spend some time here in contemplation and healing, and be guided by me and we can visit sacred sites together we can do some rituals together we can do some one-on-one -on -one healing work together in between there'll be a little maybe exercises for you to do contemplations things to explore depending on what your intentions and questions are yeah the 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 experience will depend a bit on what you want it to entail whether it's a more luxury kind of accommodation or, you know, sweet but humble. And I can help you to organize all of that. So if you're also feeling called to come and spend a bit of time on your own, a bit of time with me and some time with these sacred lands, then we can organize that and you can just get in touch with me and we can have a call and explore like what that might look like and how we might make that happen for you and when would be good. Because I know that just getting that time of stillness, that time to oneself can be really daunting. And sometimes when we take it, everything comes up, everything that we've been too busy to attend to, you know, like that thing of like how often people get ill, like they get a cold or something when they go on holiday. Um, but it happens emotionally and spiritually as well, that things that have been neglected kind of come to the surface or things that haven't had time. And so just offering, yeah, to, to kind of be there, to work with and process some of those things and hold space for that. Thank you so much for this time together and, and really from the depths of my heart for being on this journey of this podcast, which... It came from a place in me of wanting 
there to be a space for deeper, more soulful, more complex conversations about this relationship between our inner worlds and the world that we're living in and not finding that and so creating this. And I've been on such a journey with it. And for me, you know, it not just being a broadcast, you know, it not just being, I make this thing and you consume it, but really that it's a, it's reciprocal and there's community and, you know, we dance together and that I get to spend time and get to know some of you beautiful people, uh, that that's so important to me. And so, yeah, just to remind you this thing with the, the membership, that's really the place where you can express that gratitude if this has touched you in any way, as well as be part of the, the community space, be active and, you know, spend time with me and other members of our amazing team. And Mary and Anna Gret, I couldn't make this podcast without, they make it so smooth. Now we've been the three of us working together for a couple of years and it just it's easy Anna Gret crafts the the words that go along with every episode and the titles Mary does the sound editing and they're both really incredible inspirational women and I've also been collaborating with Heli as a day and Carrie on courses and membership and it's been a real journey it's been a real journey we had some discussion about whether to share this the side of it with you or not. But the app that we kind of designed in community with various people that were part of Presence Collective and that came on our Weave retreat, then it was all supposed to be done in, in a three-month period and published, you know, ready for you to use last July. Unfortunately, the person that we commissioned to do it, who was a friend of a friend, and I did check them out, I don't know what happened, but they ended up doing part of it, but not all of it, and then disappearing, and but agreeing to pay back the money. So I spent the money again, thinking it was coming back, and then it didn't come back. It's quite a lot of money. Like it's, it's been quite a big amount that's been put into making this possible with the app. And so I really do hope that it becomes something that's really useful and cherished for all of you. And of course, with something like a community space, it's only as good as the people that use it. It's only as good as, as what's shared there. You know, the situation with this developer and then the other developers that have come in and tried to fix it, it's been, it's been a, a really difficult situation actually that's just kind of kept rolling and been creating, yeah, quite a lot of stress. But it, when I reflect on it, especially being now, you know, in this space where it's it's ready to use i feel like it's a symbol of these times you know i think that this person that that didn't finish the work and that ran off with the money that they just went through something quite challenging and it was something that they maybe hadn't experienced before and then found themselves in a tight spot and didn't know how to get out of it and so often because of shame more bad behavior you know kind of gets put into the into the world and for me the whole process would have been much less painful if that person had been able to communicate what was going on for them and to tell me at least that the money wasn't coming back and that the work wasn't going to be finished and and all of that so that I knew where I stood and it's something that I'm noticing as we're in this pressure cooker as we're in this challenging time and that more and more of these scenarios and situations are unfolding. And I've, I've been in several this year. Um, some of you might, might know that I nearly opened a, a yoga studio and the person that I did it with has refused to actually give me back my, my goddess Durga statue, which is obviously a meaningful a sacred object for me as coming from that lineage and and again, I think it's this thing of shame and this thing of things being challenging. You know, of course, like opening an event space during a pandemic is really challenging. It puts on this financial pressure. I'm sharing these little stories with you. You know, they, they've been 
quite comedic and obviously painful in different ways. And I really do feel like they're a sign of the times. And so the invitation here really is like, how can we show up with as much clarity, love and compassion for each other and also just really good boundaries, really good energetic boundaries and be very like clear and direct with each other so that we don't kind of cause more pain in, in what's already a difficult time in a way where we really respect each other's time and what each other gives into this world. And it's really not about being good or being right. It's just about being honest. I feel like that's a big thing of what this time is about because, you know, there is this kind of term like late stage capitalism and we're having some discussion about that in From Me to We, if that's the, the right way to term it, it. But another phrase is the age of consequence. But we are at a time where there is so much more consequence to all kinds of behaviors that's leading to a lot of pressure and a lot of shame and a real call to be very like honest with ourselves and very committed to how we show up, to not being victims despite going through difficult things. And when I say that, I don't mean to not grieve, to not communicate, to not experience the ways that you've been wronged as being wronged, but then to take the lessons to move forward, to not kind of continue that cycle because something's happened to you, to, to find ways to keep strengthening and clarifying. Yeah, that's my deepest wish for us at this time, that we keep finding ways to strengthen, to clarify and to show up for each other. Thank you for listening and spending your time with us. As always, you can find links to everything we mention in this episode, download our book and discover so much more over on allthatweare.org. We give space to our guests to share their perspective without debating it or fact-checking as this approach allows for deep, unedited conversations from the heart. We trust your discernment and wisdom to take what is useful and challenge what isn't in your own understanding. We offer spaces for discussion and integration in our membership community. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode and it has sparked some inspiration and creativity in you. We don't believe in selling you things you don't need through this podcast. And so it's made possible by you, our beautiful community. If you loved this and would like to connect more deeply with us, please join our membership. For less than a tea or coffee a day, you can access our community conversations and benefits such as our app and member gatherings, as well as being a patron whose support makes this podcast happen. Please also hit subscribe and leave us a review wherever you listen so others find us. All that we are, celebrates all that we are already and the untapped potential that lives inside us. It invites the full power of the more than human world, nature, the unseen, our ancestors and our future generations. It reminds us that we never exist in silo through borders, timelines or polarity, that in each and every moment, all that we are is here.